Back down in Black Pearl, this video is actually two videos put together for our technicians, and one of them is about the solid fuel or the wood stove. We just did a video about our diesel stove, which we love. We also have a backup, which is the wood stove. And along with that segment about the video, if you're interested, there's another story that I share, which is really great because uh, we combine heating, air conditioning, refrigeration together, is about a gentleman who sailed around the world and came back with more money than he left with. And so if you're just interested in that cool little story, jump forward to minute about number nine, and you will get that story about sailing around the world and making money as a technician. But as with everything, let's check out some of the pros and cons about solid fuel heats. All right, well, good morning, everyone, from uh, Woody's Heating Class 231. Uh, we're down here on Black Pearl, uh, my own little uh, boat, vessel, where I spend a lot of my time and money. As many of you know, a lot of you have been down here. And so uh, I'm going to talk about two different things today. I'm having a cup of coffee. It's a kind of a cool April morning. And one of the things that I inherited with this boat was the wood stove here. So this is, uh, I'm not sure where it was purchased, but um, <clears throat> came with a boat. Denny got this cute little half size stove and uh, installed it on the boat. And so it's really nice. Um, to have heat on a boat, especially the Northwest. But and even in the summertime, I find around here, you know, real early in the morning or late in the evening, a uh, solid fuel stove like this, you know, has got some great ambiance. And so it's, um, it's pretty easy to use. Most of you have, right, probably <clears throat> built a fire at one time or another. But um, the trouble with it is, is, as with everything, it's a compromise, right? you have to bring a lot of wood with you or you have to scavenge it from somewhere. And the trouble with scavenging wood, if you're getting it off the beach, is it's generally wet and it's also um, generally could have bugs on it and such. So I don't usually scavenge wood off from the beach too much. But <clears throat> if I'm heading out, I usually will have a tote like this and, uh, and bring some supplies with me. So one thing that I also recommend is Northwest Yachting, uh, 48 North, cheap, um, you know, boating magazines, periodicals that I get, you know, when I'm done reading them, it makes great paper, crinkle it up, you know, as I'm getting my fire started and, and working on this thing. So as you build a fire, you know, I bring a, a various amounts of paper and little sticks, thin pieces of wood, this is old pattern material. For those of you that have taken safety tools to class, you probably know I. It is a benefit being an instructor at Marine Tech. We don't throw away all this wood. We repurpose it. So after someone's made a, a little pattern here and cut out a piece of wood, we save that. <clears throat> Looks like somebody was making a, a radio faceplate or something like this. And then quite often, what I do for uh, stock wood is these Presto logs. And so this was obviously put together. I, I cut them into thirds or quarters into small pieces that'll fit in my little small stove. And so I just crank it up, build a fire. <clears throat> Life is good. Sit here with my cup of coffee and talk about boats and boat stories. So um, <clears throat> it will heat the boat pretty well. Um, so that's an advantage. Like I said, the disadvantage is, um, is the source of wood, but also if you can find free wood then on the beach, that's a, that's another good thing too. So uh, disadvantage up top, you have to imagine it's a wood stove, right? Solid fuel. Um, and speaking of fuel, some people also, I think, will burn charcoal in these. Um, I've wondered about like the lump charcoal that I use in my green egg. So there's other <clears throat> sources besides just wood that you can use for these. I know some boaters have used them just to burn paper products, you know, to eliminate some of their waste. Trouble is up on deck, Whenever you have a wood stove, you've got smoke, A, which could be irritating to the neighbors, or the marina could come down and say, hey, is your boat on fire? You know, some marinas don't even allow uh, open flame like this because if you did get a hot spark out the chimney cap, now the way this chimney cap is designed, uh, it's, it, I don't think a hot spark could get out there, but 
always a possibility. So anyways, but the ambiance is super cool, right? So yeah, you get some ash on the deck, a little dirt, it washes right off. Um, you got to pack around some fuel, but to be able to light a fire in the morning or in the evening and sit there and, and be nice and warm and cozy is pretty dang cool. So <clears throat> uh, some of the things that make this stove um, efficient on this particular boat is, many of you know, my good friend Denny built this boat. And one of the old timers said the first thing you want to do with a boat if you're going to live on it or just cruise the northwest is insulate it. So this entire hull is fiberglass hull and then he put in a layer of insulation. Okay, it's a foam, uh, three quarter inch thick I believe. And then he put another layer of fiberglass over that. Um, and this is just down to uh, waterline level. But the whole boat is, um, is insulated. So when we build a fire in here, and if the boat's warm, it stays warm for a good long while. And so much, much um, needed in the Northwest and very much enjoyable to sit here. I can, you can't feel it on the camera, but I got nice heat coming off of here. I got my coffee. Um, <clears throat> so that is solid fuel. ABYC does have a few regulations. Um, I think it's A6. I was looking through. There might be more. Um, I know under galley stoves, they have a thing that if you have a wood stove, okay, and or a, a galley stove, and it's got a single wall pipe, and uh, it has to be, I believe, nine inches, you know. I'm not the instructor of the class, so you can sort that out on your own, but this is a double wall uh, piece of pipe, and so it obviously could be closer. I think I'm close to, I'm not nine inches away back here. Um, I could measure it, I'm like five, and so, it's a little tight. He did put brick, and I don't know how he cut these brick on the side down um, and underneath, but it's got a nice hearth, and, and I feel pretty safe um, using the solid fuel stove. I don't think any insurance companies have disclaimers um, that would not allow for these as long as they're properly installed. So there is a company that makes really good-looking stoves over in um, the islands, on Orcas Island. I think they're still in business. I'll try and insert a link um, into the video or onto the canvas page to look at them. They're kind of expensive, but you get some, uh, when I go to the Wooden Boat Festival, some of those old classic wooden boats have got super cool wood stoves. And it's always cool to have a have somebody sitting there telling you the story of the boat and, and feeding wood into the fire. So um, This is not the primary uh, heat source for the boat. I have a, a diesel stove. If I had a but with a wood stove, I would also want a secondary heat because this is a pain in the neck, right? A nice little air top or a hydronic heater, you know, something with a thermostat, a lot to be said for that. So we're not going to focus on these as part of the class, but I wanted you to see one, see the fire going, see how I built it, <clears throat> stuff like that. I still got, I can open it up. We got a little bit of fire in there. I'm not putting too much wood in because, um, well... I have to go to school pretty soon and so um, that would be a, could be an issue okay um, so while we're sitting here I can't tell you the whole story of Black Pearl but I'm gonna tell you a story that relates to your class you heard about Woody and I loved his story about how he inherited a set of gauges because his refrigeration system he had to work on it you know um, when he had his uh, Tay Onion was out cruising around so when <clears throat> I had the good fortune um, I've owned this boat for like 15 plus years, almost 20, I don't know. My wife and I, we raised our son every summer on this boat. But before that, so this is in the early 90s, so that'd be 20, if it was 92 or 3, I guess that's almost going on 28 years, 27, doesn't matter. So we're over in Victoria. I used to work on, help Danny with projects on the boat, some painting or whatever. I put an inverter on back in the day. We go on boat trips. So he took me over to Victoria my first time. Super cool uh, town. I loved it. <clears throat> Hanging out on the boat. And I was having a cup of coffee like this with the neighbor who was tied up right next to us. And the guy was really skittish. And so, um, and the reason was that um, in about 93, 94, that's when cell phones were starting to come out. Well, this guy was telling me he had just completed a circumnavigation. Seven years. And I was like, Really? I want to know more. And I kind of said, well, to be honest there, you know, I don't remember his name, 
Bruce or Joe or somebody. I said, your boat doesn't look like a world cruiser. He said, why is that? I said, well, you don't have any solar. You don't have wind generation. You don't have a life raft. Like, he goes, well, here's the thing. After my circumnavigation, I peeled up the coast and in Mexico sold the solar panels, right? And then he said, when I got to San Francisco where it was really windy, I sold the wind vane or the, um, he sold the wind generator. Um, he had sold the wind vane, the self steer, I believe in Mexico as well. And so, and then the life raft somewhere else along the way. Um, <clears throat> so he just had stripped the boat down. But the point of the story is the guy was, he was freaked out because the, when he left in the eighties thing, you know, Victoria was a pretty quiet, little sleepy town. When he came back in the nineties, seven years later, it had more than doubled in size. People were walking around with cell phones on their head and he, he's like, nobody had a cell phone when he left civilization. And if you talk to almost anybody who's sailed around the world, it definitely tweaks with your mind a little bit. But this guy highly recommended it. So his story was he had worked on um, saving money for his cruise for a good number of years. So he had enough money to go around the world and he figured he'd go around the world in about four or five years. He took a class, much like you're in, because he had uh, the same refrigeration system that Woody had. He had this engine-driven compressor with a holding plate. And he goes, for him, it was important. He's thinking, I'm crossing oceans. i got to have cold food. And so he took a class, learned how, just one class, learned how to work on refrigeration. He bought himself a, a, a tank of gas, right? <clears throat> and um, I don't know, back then, you know, it was probably R12 or whatever. So he got his refrigerant, he had a set of gauges, took off on his world cruise after he saved the money. He said his only regret was that he had worked for four, four plus years saving money to go on the cruise because he came back from that trip with more money than he left. He said, here's the thing, when you're out cruising, if you know how to fix refrigeration, you can work in any port or anchorage that you get to. Everywhere he went, he would just fix a couple of people's refrigerators. Sometimes he'd get money, sometimes he'd get fish or food. But he actually said, so in seven years, just by having the skill set of being able to do refrigeration work, he came back with more money. And that was his regret. He said, if, he goes, if he goes, if I would have dropped dead in those five years trying to save money, he goes, I'd have missed out on the whole trip, you know? And, and he goes, the things that he fears are important. So that was a little, quick little story about this boat. And how it kind of ties into the bigger, since we're not going to cover this little solid fuel stove very much in the class, at least you know what they are, a little bit of standards. But <clears throat> refrigeration is, is really where it's at. And same thing in the Northwest, if you want to live here and just learn how to fix furnaces and install furnaces, there is tons of work in our industry. So thanks for watching.